Welcome to the course Environmental Impact Assessments and uh, in today's class we are going to look into EIA particularly for transportation. So with regards to that we are going to look at uh, what are the definitions and concepts involved uh, when we deal with transportation though the domain is in itself it's a, a big domain but uh, with EIA we are going to look at very selective things. So we'll look at definitions and involved concepts which we would require for EIA purpose. And then uh, we'll be looking at like what kind of things we undertake during scoping and baseline study uh, pertaining with transportation baseline as well as when we undertake environmental baseline. Further we'll look at related impact prediction and evaluation. So what kind of impact transportation project has and uh, how do we undertake prediction and evaluation and then we'll look at the associated software which are available for the purpose of impact prediction. So we'll not get into the details of this software or, or how we perform that but we'll just look at what all things are available to us. So that would be the coverage. So accordingly the learning outcome, the expected learning outcome from you is that you should be able to define and describe basic concepts related with transportation and in the domain of environmental impact assessment. Further, you should be able to identify different elements of scoping and baseline studies like what all you need to undertake. And then you should be able to identify key impacts, what happens in the case of transportation projects and then how do you undertake evaluation and you should be able to identify softwares related to that. So that's the learning outcome expected from you. If uh, we look at like uh, uh, any kind of transportation project where it is uh, what's the nature of the project and what's the location of what kind of development is happening like in case of transportation project it determines the nature of trips to and fro from the site. So uh, for example if there's there's an industry coming up and then how many people would really go and come and what would be the nature of that movement would uh, be different compared to a mall which is there or uh, relatively if there's a transportation um, hub itself. So with the nature and the location of the project the kind of trips uh, to the site and from the site will vary a lot. So uh, that one needs to understand. And uh, when we see that uh, when we are doing EIA for transportation itself like transportation project itself like we're doing EIA for road, we're doing EIA for airport or doing EIA for rail links and so on. Uh, that will require uh, detailed assessments of all the environmental impact uh, as the part of the legal requirement itself. So uh, any infrastructure project would also need that. And uh, apart from that, in all the EIA uh, projects, wherever you do EIA, even if they are non-transportation related areas, then also it has impact on the transportation. Like we talked about any kind of urban development projects or uh, for that matter, uh, industry coming up or a mall coming up. So uh, irrespective, they are not the transportation related project, but then that also when you are doing EIA will have impact on transportation. So uh, for both these nature of projects, whether it's a transportation project or any other kind of project will uh, generate uh, need for transportation and it will also uh, impact the transportation as well as it will have environmental impact. And these uh, environmental impacts may include noise and vibration, air pollution, and then also impact on biodiversity, and then uh, community severe rents, which means dividing of the community or uh, stress to the community. Then there can be uh, visual interference, there can be accidents, and uh, they can be like uh, it can create. Uh, good access for some but it might obstruct up, uh, access to some other people. So all these kind of environmental impacts can happen. So uh, as we had also seen before when we studied the guidance and legal legislation aspect related to transportation that World Bank provides you inputs like it has an a handbook on roads and the environment which tells you how to undertake 
EIA with respect to transportation projects or how, how you handle the technical aspects of roads and uh, related EIA. So that uh, handbook provides you all the methods uh, uh, to design and carry out um, uh, uh, how to undertake effective EIAs. Well, and for the wide range of projects, it tells you. So you can also look at that. So I've given you the link to that particular uh, handbook here. Looking at that, how important transportation is that, even if it is not a transportation project, then also you'll have impact on transportation. So in all kind of EIA, you might have to undertake this particular aspect. So now moving on, looking at the definitions and concepts of uh, related with uh, um, EIA in the transportation domain. So we see that there is like, how do you really model when you try to understand transportation? What is the demand for transportation? You have like, uh, basically, it, has, uh, it is divided into four stage model, very generalized model. And uh, that, that's been developed decades ago. And, and like you can uh, see that those four stages are that the, in the first stage, you identify like how you're going to zone things, how the network system would be, how things will be connected, uh, how one land use would be connected with the other land use and how the transportation network would be. So think about your own cities and see how the commercial areas are, how the residential areas are, and how the, uh, uh, the uh, bus service or uh, any kind of public transportation, all those network work in your place. Uh, if it visualize that with the zoning and then the kind of network you have. So that, that's the first stage uh, of uh, identifying those zoning and the network which are there. So that, that is usually done in the transportation project. Uh, the second stage is like collecting data on what kind of population is there, what kind of land use is there, and then how the traffic flows. You model that and you also estimate total number of trips generated. So how many trips are really generated uh, because of the uh, population which is moving and uh, how it attracts each zone that is all identified and modeled. So you see how the movement is between all kind of land users, what's the population size and how people are moving. So the important part here is that you look at the number of trips, or what is generated, that is what you look at in the second stage. And then um, you uh, look at stage three, uh, where you have a distribution of origins and destination, like from where people are originating when they're moving and when they are where they are going to. So origin and destination is another key aspect which you take into consideration uh, while uh, these input data would be required for you to really understand the environmental aspect of this. Uh, and then further uh, in stage four, you assign trips by mode, like by which mode people will go. They will go by walking, cycling, by their private vehicles or uh, public transportation. So you, you look at uh, then when people are moving, how many, how many trips are there, but then you assign them mode wise. So that is uh, the standardized way of when you handle a transportation planning project. So the output of such models, when you do that, you do undertake uh, all these assessments, the key output of this model is uh, that you provide estimates of traffic and or passengers flow on what kind of link you're working on. Um, so that is what is what comes out, what's the traffic, what will be the passenger flow. And uh, when you have this from the planning stage, then um, this becomes an input for your EIA, where you would now predict and estimate or model the environmental effects. So uh, that is what we do, and that is what we're going to see here. So these are some basic, very basic concepts of transportation. So, uh, so looking at different modes of transportation, I did talk about different modes. So in the picture, you can see the different modes which are there. So once you have the trip ideas, then you divide like how many trips would be made by different modes you can see here. 
So when you talk about trips, you also look at diff, uh, like uh, you have terms like new trips and pass by trips. So looking at these terms, new trips, what do we really mean by new trips? So new trips are those trips that uh, did not occur anywhere else on the transportation network. So you're generating new trips because of whatever development is happening in your place, you are creating people to move from one place to the another. So you're generating new trips uh, in that particular network. So that is called new trips. And then another term is pass by trips. So uh, pass by trips are made as a part of another journey. So uh, there's another journey going on and uh, with that you make a pass by trips uh, like you have you stop at a place uh, like when you're going from your work to your home then you stop halt at certain places so that's called that's called pass by trip so you need to understand the characteristic of how people are moving then you also have diverted trips so diverted trips are also similar uh, to this uh, pass by trips, but if you look at it, it involves a, a longer diversion. So people move away from their scheduled uh, travel pattern uh, for a longer time uh, and uh, they spend more time. And um, so th that is what we call as a diverted uh, trips. Further, you also have linked trips that are. Uh, trips with multiple destination that you move to one stop to the other then the other and so on so you have linked trips so you you have seen these terms here then you also look at the terms of as transferred trips so uh, this term means trips that are already being made and that would be transferred to the proposed development so people who were already moving to that particular destination but because of the new development they would just uh, those uh, trips would be moved to another destination so that's a transferred trips so uh, another term which you need to know is peak traffic flow so this is one of the most significant parts when you understand the traffic uh, problems and uh, this gives you like what uh, is uh, the uh, at what time uh, the, uh, the traffic flow would be the highest. So uh, usually these are over the weekdays, morning or evening, you must have uh, realized when you have a lot of traffic jams and the time at particular hour you have these. So it can be at when everybody's moving for work and school or they are returning from work and school. So that could be your peak hour. So you need to understand that term as well. And uh, there's another term, which is community severance. So uh, this is defined as the phenomenon where, uh, where you have a new road or a rail line which comes up uh, or any kind of a fast moving traffic. So that uh, really creates a barrier and then uh, that uh, cuts the existing lines of travel of communication. So maybe from one part to the another, you have people staying together, but then your transportation, whatever you're building newly, it's divide the same community. So that's, that's called as community severance. So it essentially, it really uh, practically divides the community into two. So that was about some very, very, very selective uh, uh, definitions and concepts. So now moving on to scoping and baseline studies. So uh, in the transportation project, uh, when, when you undertake EIA, so uh, while you're doing scoping, you're deciding how much you need to study and uh, you're also trying to assess what's the ground situation in the baseline study, what exactly you look at. So in case of uh, transportation, when you're dealing with transportation, so you, you look at the planning context like uh, in which environment, which context, the urban, rural, uh, where, what kind of situation is where the development of the proposal is happening, where the proposal is coming to co come up. And then uh, what kind of highway trips, generation and trip distribution would happen. So the, the terms which you got familiar with. And then um, 
uh, the idea is that we do not end up making everything, but we try to ma optimize all the resources we have. So how do we really use public transportation? Are we using it to the complete capacity or not? And then how we are taking care of the people who are walking, cycling. So are we taking care of that or not? So are we using to optimal level all the networks which are available to us? So other aspect is to look at uh, the sustainable travel, so how, how we are promoting. So all, all these have to be taken care of when you are uh, deciding for scoping of your project. So uh, what assumptions you are making related to your uh, project which you're coming up? And then uh, what are the safety issues involved? And then what kind of mitigation uh, you plan to undertake in the project? So all that has to be, you see that mitigation, all this comes at a very later stage of EIA, but one needs to really take care of it from in practice from the beginning also, because it will have implications in all other parts. So here in this uh, manual from uh, MOEFCC, uh, we, you can see that uh, how we have terms of reference, TOR for highways, and within that you have project descriptions where you tell why the project is relevant in terms of existing development plans, the point to point one I'm talking about here, and then the pro what the project will cover, what's like the initial planning uh, area plan, master plan, what it's telling, what's how, what's the scope of it, what we are trying to achieve through that, and what kind of alternatives have been planned. I have be, we have looked at all the sustainability aspect and we have made use of optimal, all uh, like we are optimizing all the resources and then what procedure we have followed and what is the suitability of what we are proposing in case of hi highway, what kind of alignment what we are choosing, how the highway would be built. So all that has to be discussed in the project description. And then uh, highways in particular deal with a lot of land acquisition, uh, rehabilitation of the communities, and then what's their present status. So all that needs to be described here because it's like all highway projects have, uh, pro uh, have to deal with land acquisition. And then, uh, and which have, we have already seen, and then you also have all the technology which will be involved in the design, construction, equipment, and operation, and the kind of manpower, and then oh, uh, about the project, how do you plan to handle it? So all that has it's like detailed out. In case of you can see this, I have also given you the link to this particular TOR, so you can have a look at it. Then there's another case uh, which we have been discussing in our all our EIA. So uh, you see that uh, you have Low Country Corridor West draft. So here also you can see at the center 2.1 project need. And then they are also discussing 2.1.1 growth in population and employment. So the flow chart which you saw and then how what kind of information uh, has to be provided. So you can see in the example here. And then you can see how they are also looking at the traffic volume projection here, travel demand forecasting. And then you can see in the table here, like how roadway wise they are in, uh, like for every segment, they have projected the demand, travel demand. And they have used uh, two methods, what you can see here. Uh, and then they have seen that which one pr uh, projects their travel demands better. So you can see that here. And then um, in the same, they have like uh, looking at the sustainability options, like they're looking at the pedestrian and bicyclist, uh, how the consideration has been made and ensure that whatever project they are doing um, is required to address to the needs of the people here. So uh, here you can see that uh, how they have also worked out the transportation system management, uh, transportation demand management. So in this image, uh, you can see that how they have uh, looked into all the aspects. So you see that what strategy they adopted to make it more sustainable. Uh, they have looked at the carpool, 
uh, ride share ma matching uh, and then um, the van pool as well here as shown here. Then also the transit pass incentives, what kind of policies are there, which they have looked into then telecommuting, compressed work week, like how the work pattern has been organized to handle the traffic. Then they are looking at the walk environment, how they are enhancing those work environments, and then how they are working on uh, educating and promoting the sustainable pattern here. So you see those things here. And uh, uh, wherever uh, they have also tried to take the mitigation measures uh, within the scope and implementation strategy. So here you can see like uh, minimizing, minimization and mitigation of harm. So how they are undertaking that, you can see here from their report. I, 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 I'll be sharing this report with you so you can see that here. You can just note down the numbers. Uh, it's an extensive report, so just to understand the concept of it. So you can see in the table 6.1 taken from the report itself. So you can see how they have come up with the overall harm matrix, the damage matrix for uh, every alternative. So they have done that. And then you can see like how factor wise they're looking at ability to mitigate adverse impact to each section and so on. And then they are um, comparing it and then they are arriving at the conclusions. So how they are also taking care of minimization and mitigation of all the damage here. So it, it has to be taken care in the initial scoping level itself. So here in the example, you will see from the same report that uh, they have like no matter what kind of project is there, there's some kind of harm which happens. So how they are going to undertake, how they're going to take care of that. So the mitigation, uh, how, how they're going to control that damage. So here you see uh, that area here from this particular case that which was getting, uh, which had to be rehabilitated, relocated some of the infrastructure of theirs. So they identified it. Uh, and uh, re uh, if you'll see the figure 6.1, um, they have prepared a draft which shows the proposed replacement of the community center. So how, which facility they are replacing, re uh, relocating. So that is what they are proposing here. So all these things have to be taken care of in the scoping stage itself. So we also saw with the example. So now looking at how do you undertake the transport baseline um, study. So what all you need to undertake in that. So uh, within the transportation baseline, you see that you would be required to detail uh, all the uh, transportation details here. Um, and uh, these things, if you'll see that it varies from project to project, it varies from context to context. So uh, you have to take care of it. But then this is very, very standardized general uh, aspect which I'm talking about here. So you have to take care of the site layout. Uh, you have to, uh, generally the project description would have site layout, you will have what kind of uh, uh, accesses are there, what uh, kind of uh, uh, layout is there along all the modes, and then what are the uh, land use surrounding that, what kind of infrastructure, what kind of services, and what kind of character is there. Further, you need to provide like, um, what is the existing scenario with the public transportation, and at what frequency it is there, uh, the current services are there, and what kind of public uh, transport changes are expected to happening in that place. And then you need to also give the data on current uh, traffic flows, on all the links which are there at the junctions which are there. So all those detailed study has to be undertaken. And uh, you also need to identify the study area. So what study is area you will take? And then what are the critical links, interconnections, and junctions which you're going to study? Uh, and you need to highlight those detailed study here when you do the transportation baseline. You also need to understand uh, and you need to show, uh, undertake accident records uh, uh, of the all the local roads uh, and uh, you have to undertake it for the, like what, what is mentioned, you would like uh, take it for three to five years period. 
And then you have to also undertake qualitative and quantitative uh, study. And you have to describe and present those uh, characteristic of the nature of travel which is happening because of the, uh, the kind of development which you're proposing here. And then what is also the parking facility in the area and what kind of parking demand you would be generating as well as what parking strategy you are adopting in this case. So, uh, so lo looking at uh, again the, the highway um, uh, manual, so here in the summary of the project details like you can see that serial number like 21, uh, what details you really provide for the project, length of the new alignment, width of the new alignment and uh, look at the detail, the technical details which will be provided here with all, all kind of um, uh, elements which will be there in your project. So you can see from another like low country corridor, US example as well, you can see how I've just uh, uh, snipped the table of content. You can see how it has the chapter two which deals with the purpose and need. You can see chapter three talks about the alternatives. Then you have uh, like uh, how you're doing uh, screening the alternatives and uh, how you are evaluating the alternatives, then what kind of chapter four is uh, dealing with the baseline assessment. So you see how intensively they are studying the land use, they are studying um, different like farmlands, community, the socioeconomic aspect, the environmental justice analysis they are taking. Then you see how the uh, other air quality, noise, water quality, water resource, flat plain, natural resource, all, all this information which you have already seen in other forms of EIA, um, other domain of EIA methods. So that all would be covered here. So see the intensive details which are there. So here I've taken another example. You can look at this Green National Highway Corridor project. From Madhya Pradesh, you see the EIA report here. So I've given you the link as well. So you see how they have provided all the details. You can see 4.2 study area, the physical environment. You can see the geology, hydrology, the climate and rainfall. All those intensive details are provided. You can see the land use, biodiversity, which you have already studied about. And then look at the ambient air quality. Uh, ambient noise level in the center you can see then you can see the soil sampling so all all that intensive detail studies are here so yeah i have given you the link also so you can uh, download that and flip through the report so it's also required that you describe the baseline um, of this traffic on the uh, on the entire stretch which you're working out and uh, you, you need to look at all these details, highway width and uh, junctions, the delay which will happen, average speed, the turning movements, number of accidents, proportions of heavy goods vehicles, so all that has to be given. Plus you need to give the number of bus movements, pedestrian and cycle flow, location and types of uh, on-street car parking, the nature of frontage land uses. So uh, when you're doing uh, the same for uh, rail and tramway, then you need to provide these thing aspects. So you need to provide the line capacity. Is it single or dual? Then you have to tell about uh, station capacity. You might have to tell about the platform length. Uh, then uh, what kind of passenger movement is there? What kind of capacity is there? What frequency of service is there? What kind of delays are there? Uh, what's the junction capacity, signaling issues, then uh, layover capacity, proportion of freight trains, uh, how many freight trains come, how many passenger trains come comparatively, what's the proportion, and uh, how many trains really stop at a particular area, and then what's the speed. So all that has to be taken care of when you deal with those kind of projects. When you're dealing with cycling and walking facility, then that time you have to deal with like what is the pavement, what is the sidewalk uh, sidewalk width, you need to look at the network standards, how well they are, all the cycling and walking is well connected, what, what's their destinations and um, how uh, these routes are 
linked and then the what's the journey they make and what are the different user groups are there. So that all uh, has to be described in your project depending on the nature of project which you're doing. So that is about the transportation baseline. So given on what nature of transportation projects you have, you have to give all those kind of details. So now uh, related with that, now we'll look at environmental baseline. So you'll, uh, all, all these projects will have an impact on like, uh, it will have impact on air quality, it will have impact, uh, it will have greenhouse gas impact because there'll be a lot of vehicles moving. Uh, and then there'll be impact on community, economic uh, uh, impact, there'll be cultural impact, ecology impact. So uh, it, it will uh, like have impact on several domain what we see here. And uh, another like you'll have key health and safety issues. There'll be, uh, since it's related with land acquisition, resettlement, you might also have uh, issues, uh, concerns about indigenous people and uh, how the land use, landscape and townscape, all these are going to change noise and vibration. What will really happen to the water resource or the soil type and geology in that area. So the environmental impact, the nature of environmental impact for transportation project is very wide and very intensive. And uh, there'll be certain direct impacts um, in case of new transportation projects, there can be indirect impacts uh, which lead to changes in the transportation system. So all these have to be covered. So when you look at the environmental, so all these we have already seen the range of it. So I'm going to like uh, not really cover that aspect here, but that all has to be taken care in the um, transportation aspect here. So now looking at impact prediction and evaluation. So how do you undertake that? While you are reviewing, assessing the transportation impact, uh, you are required to have a lot of to and fro approach, iterative approach you need to take. And when you take that, it helps you to uh, improve like what kind of sustainable options are there uh, and uh, what all interventions you're taking. In order to take care of that, so you have a lot of softwares which are available, uh, which are used in this. So you can see Saturn, which is uh, said to be a very powerful and a flexible assessment package uh, and it helps uh, users to create what uh, strategies it, use it for local traffic modeling here and uh, based on uh, like what kind of need are there it helps people to use it. Uh, then you also have city labs which is like cube software name is cube it's also an open modeling software, uh, which is used by the planners, it's used by the engineers, and they analyze uh, what kind of effect uh, uh, the new project, the proposed project will have, uh, or the uh, change in policy will have on the transportation network in the given context, and what impact it will have on the land use, and what kind of impact it will have on the population. So this software is also there, and uh, this is used to develop and apply predictive multimodal transportation models. So you looked at different mo modes, so it helps you to have a multimodal transportation models. So you can see like across what different modes it can, uh, what's happening. So it can create, replicate um, uh, the complete, uh, like uh, whichever part you're doing it, so it can create a, a digital twin. So uh, the cube can do that and it can help you to stimulate uh, the changes, what kind of changes will happen in infrastructure, operations, technology, and then what kind of change will happen in demographic because of uh, the kind of accessibility change that will take place here. So I've given you the link, you can uh, see more about the software here. Then there's another uh, software you see, MA, um, it's so uh, again, a transportation forecasting system for the purpose of uh, planning and uh, it's it can be used at the urban level regional level or it can be used at the national level as well to plan the things so i've given you the link to this as well so then another one is omnitrans so uh, this is again uh, again uh, takes care of the multimodal and multi-temporal transport modeling 
and it helps you to look at all static and dynamic uh, assignments like what will happen uh, in case of uh, you can see with the changes as well so um, it helps you to model even the public transportation you can do how accessible the scenarios are. You, it helps you for planning, it helps you for designing, and also looking at the operations uh, and traffic management part. part. So uh, this is said to be a very powerful tool, and uh, it, uh, it also comes with uh, transportation data processing and analysis. So I've given you a link to this as well. Then you also have TransCAD, uh, which is like uh, linked with geographic information system, which is uh, designed uh, to, for the transportation professionals. So they can store data, they can display, manage and analyze various transportation data. So uh, this one combines GIS and transportation modeling. So you have been hearing about GIS. So this one helps you to combine the both transportation aspect as well as GIS aspect. So I've given you a link to that as well, so you can see how it allows you for mapping and data visualization. So you can see different modes which are there here. Uh, then you can also see uh, PTV by SIM. So uh, uh, this also you can see how it is simulating the environment. So uh, if, uh, if you see the range of uh, softwares which are available, so they might not really give you a very detailed study, but they might give you a very uh, overall um, understanding of the place. So you also have uh, softwares which can give you very specific uh, junctions and uh, streets uh, uh, analysis as well. So you have NCAP and Picadi software as well, which can give you very detailed uh, uh, to a very larger scale understanding here. So uh, Picadi is used for predicting capacity, what kind of QD uh, delay would happen in that, and then what are the accident risk at any point, particular junction, inter intersections, which you see. So whichever is your important intersection, you can look at that. So I've given you the link to this as well. So if you're interested, you can go through that. So uh, this one really works with uh, like uh, you, for all these modeling you give like what kind of trips like I talked about input data has to be given. So person trips and then it would break down into transport mode and then uh, you would uh, predict the impact and what impact it would have on that. So uh, you also have like a lot of data sources which are there. So you have tricks database, which helps you to analyze and build a scenario. So you can also, when you do not have all the data with you, then you can also refer to similar cases, uh, similar case study, and you can, from those study, you can infer and transfer, uh, like draw inferences from your case. So you also, based on these, uh, with the data, you predict trips, and then you also check with what will happen with the project and what will happen without the project, uh, like when you do nothing. So you need to check the scenarios with that and you need to check the scenarios with when the development will happen. So all that has to be taken care of within your uh, baseline study. So now uh, we are going to look at the environmental impacts of the transportation projects. So if you look at uh, various categories of impact, so you have like air quality and greenhouse gases, so that we have already seen, uh, like there could be dust from the construction, there could be air pollution and carbon emissions. So that can be there. And then uh, in case of transportation in particular, you look at uh, the nitrogen dioxide, you look at the particulate matter, and uh, you might also look uh, choose what pollutant to look at depending on what kind of fuel is used most in your context. So uh, you uh, look at the difference in roadside uh, particulate matter and uh, nitrogen dioxide with or without project and near the area. So you make all those kind of analysis and then you also look at what are the vulnerable groups 
uh, especially who will be prone to this uh, respiratory illness. And it could be children, it could be elderly, uh, which would be of your particular concern. You may also keep in mind that uh, your transportation project can also have impact beyond the local situation. So we had talked about this before also in initial lectures. So uh, it can go beyond the boundary also. So that also need to be taken care of. So like uh, photochemical reactions of vehicle pollutants in the atmosphere. Taking this example from um, uh, EIE report from Nepal, you can see that here. So how they are presenting that impact here. So you can see the road, road uh, component, which they're discussing the length of the road, and then what kind of parameters they are looking at and what are the uh, emissions with different scenarios. So they are looking at this. I've given the link to this as well. Then you have communities and economic activity. So community severance can happen. We, uh, we try to understand that concept. Then loss of roadside community, business and social activity, reduced convenience of traditional and sustainable modes of transport. So that can happen. And then what the social interaction of people can reduce. And then uh, it can also influence the cultural heritage. There can be loss and damage to heritage resources, which can happen. And then you can also have ecological and biodiversity loss. And in this example, again, from the Nepal, you can see how they are analyzing all that so project detail, like what kind of biodiversity it's going to influence and see the intensive grid system they have created and how they are documenting all kind of different. Uh, so for the linear project, how they're really going to um, do the impact assessment. So you look at tiger habitat occupancy, which they are looking through the grid system here, and then how they are also looking at the land use pattern and wildlife along the road corridor here. So uh, uh, we have already seen uh, what kind of methods have to be followed for this. And then uh, you also need to look at health and safety. So there can be a lot of death and injuries due to accidents because of this. So it can directly impact people through increased deaths and injuries uh, due to accidents. You can have uh, transmission disease uh, because of people traveling, uh, including sexually transmitted disease and so on. It can also lead to contamination of the local water uh, supply and then it, uh, air pollution can happen and that can lead to health issues. And then there can also be no noise pollution that can also lead to uh, health issues. Then the concern about indigenous people, displacement of indigenous population can happen. It, uh, your project can also lead to violation of the rights to participate in the development. So all that can happen here. So it is said that transportation infrastructure uh, in, uh, increases the accessibility and movement and that, that can lead to a lot of changes in the lifestyle of the indigenous people. And often it makes it difficult for them to maintain their tradition and custom. And then it also exposes them to a lot of uh, external pressure. And then there's uh, unavoidable case of land acquisition and resettlement. So people lose homes, business, facilities. And uh, so that, that one has to really undertake the intensive process. Then you have noise and vibration. Uh, that has uh, like uh, uh, this also we have already looked at. So uh, you have models to undertake it. So you see that. Uh, you have uh, models for um, uh, noise uh, uh, modeling estimation from tra road traffic. So you have FHWA Stamena 2, then you have Optima, then you have Microbrut. So that all those lists are given to you. So these all uh, are available for uh, noise modeling from the road traffic. So you can see this. Then you also have impact on soil because of the pump action and increased erosion, um, uh, the soil character changes. You have water resource issues. So uh, if you look at the uh, key issue which happens because of the transportation infrastructure is that you have loss of productive soils. You have 
you see erosion increases because the gradient changes. Uh, soil contamination also happens because of the uh, drainage runoff uh, uh, contains metals and rubber, more and more exposure happens. And then there is also cumulative effect. So uh, there uh, would be also change in the landscape and townscape. So we're also going to see how one undertakes landscape impact assessments. So that, that's going to change the landscape character. There can be um, a loss of key visual features, and then there can be new visual features, which can also come here. So that can also happen here. So uh, then you have the reporting components where you need to take care of it. So here you see that the summary of impact. So all these projects are presenting the summary, though the style varies how they do it. So you here again, you can see how anticipated Im impact on physical and biological environment from this project. So you can see here from Andhra Pradesh project here, you can see how they are summarizing it with the air, land, water. Likewise, you can uh, see all, all, all the areas. You can see air, land, water. You can see noise, flora. You can see agricultural land, building and built structure in right of way, people and community, culture assets, utilities and amenities, labor, health, and safety. So all, all these uh, gives uh, summarizes um, like one has to also give the summary of all kind of impact which will happen. So uh, all this is given. So uh, in the end, you need to summarize all the intensive detailed study you have done. The style can vary. So uh, that was all about uh, the transportation EIA. So summarizing what we covered today. So we looked at um, uh, the concepts, certain definitions, uh, very limited one to understand the transportation impact. And then we looked at different uh, elements of scoping and baseline studies pertaining to transportation baseline. How do we undertake that? And then we did for environmental baseline study. And then we looked at the key impacts and how do we evaluate that? And then we looked at some of the softwares available for modeling purpose of a, for impact assessment. So these were the references, our key references, Terrible and Wood's book on methods and environmental and social impact assessments, and then all, all the gui guidance and manuals which we have used, and also the projects uh, which I had shown you. The links to those projects have been provided so that you can, if you wish, you can download and read that further. So um, our coverage is limited. Um, but please feel free to ask questions. Let us know about your uh, any concerns you have to share your opinions, experiences, and suggestions. Looking forward to interacting and co-learning with you while exploring EA. Thank you.